Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog lifefromtheviolasection.com where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. Today I wanted to kind of troubleshoot and answer your questions about Fourscore's newest update, version 15. This was released a couple weeks ago now along with iOS 26, which is the newest operating system by Apple, which uses liquid glass, kind of does it kind of changes the way the display looks and how a lot of things work. So Fourscore has updated their app to match this liquid glass effect and to really kind of integrate nicely with iOS 26. With that release, I've received a lot of questions about where things have moved around to and just kind of general how to use this new version of the app. So I thought I would go over a bunch of those questions today and kind of give you sort of a guided tour of this new version of the app along with answering your questions. Let's just dive in right here. I have scales up today, so exciting and fun. No, actually I love scales. Practicing scales is really just relaxing to me. <laughs> Took me many years to get to that point, but in college I discovered that if you're tired in the morning, a scale is a great way to just kind of gradually wake up. I'm just in a rambling mood today. So this is just what Fourscore looks like when I open it here in version 15. Now, if you're wondering how to get version 15, it is just an app update. So if you have automatic updates turned on in the app store, it will just automatically update to version 15. There are some system requirements for using this new version of Fourscore. I believe you need iOS 17 or newer to be able to update to this version. Um, if you have not updated your operating system in a while, I personally recommend doing that because the new updates provide security fixes. So if you are on a very old version of iOS, and you click on a bad link or you download some kind of app, you're gonna be more likely to get some bugs or even get a virus. So I personally recommend updating, but of course, you know, if you have an older iPad or any kind of tech and you're unsure how the new operating system will work on your device, definitely Google that, kind of troubleshoot it on your own, make an informed decision before you update. All right, so now that you have Fourscore version 15, it's going to look kind of rounder on the edges. The menus are going to be more transparent than before, or maybe a little bit smaller than before. And looking at the settings under multitasking and gestures, I personally have windowed apps selected. This makes your iPad act almost more like a desktop computer and less like large iPhone. <laughs> so, in my four score, if I hover towards the top of the screen with my trackpad, if you don't have a trackpad and you're just using your hands, you can just lightly swipe down from the very top center of the screen and that will pull up the menu as well. So let's go through some of these things. You can access your library by tapping on the half note in the top left. I have mine sorted by all scores and it's in alphabetical order by the title of the score. If you'd like to add a score into four score you can go down here it looks sort of like a download button to me um, but you can tap on that and import either from files from a cloud service or from a specific store you can scan something or you can use a template so there are a variety of different ways that you can add music into four score personally i don't really use this button but i know a lot of people do so right here in the app in this menu, you have a lot of different ways that you can add music to Fourscore. If you'd like to add a new scan, just tap on scan and then it is going to pull up this kind of menu. Tap on the plus button and you'll get to the camera. You can see my iPad camera is not the greatest, uh, which is why I personally use TurboScan on my phone because I find that it creates a really high quality scan, one that I'm actually happy with. You can also choose from photos or from your files or from images. All right, now on to bookmarks. I have no bookmarks in this piece. Now on to bookmarks. I have no bookmarks in this score, so let's go to something that does. How about this book of piano accompaniments? Now, when I open bookmarks, you can see the one bookmark that I have added within this score. If you wanna create a new one, 
you could go to the plus button, choose this page range that you'd like this to be from. Let's just choose three to nine. If you need to, you can preview what the different pages look like so that you can find what you need and you can create a title for that specific song or section, you know, whatever makes sense to you. If you'd like to add multiple bookmarks in one go, you just want to press this plus button towards the top right. So this will be minuet and then it will go to page 12. So that's just one song within this bigger score. I want to make more bookmarks, so I press the plus button up here. You can see it's added the score over here in my bookmarks, but I still have this dialog open where I can create another bookmark. So this one is going to be Gavotte in G minor, page 13 to 15. I'm ready to be done making bookmarks now, so I'm just gonna press save. Took me out of that, but it saved all of those new bookmarks that I just created. All right, there is a cool, new to me at least, feature within bookmarks called Table of Contents. When you open bookmarks, you're automatically on this book icon, which shows you the bookmarks. If you go to the right, there is one that kind of looks like a Table of Contents. Press this download, upload, whatever button, and it tells you that it'll search the PDF for anything looks like a table of contents and import what they think will be bookmarks. So let's see if it works for this one. That didn't work. This book does have a table of contents, by the way. Let's try this one. Let's try Suzuki Violin book five and see if it likes this one. No, it doesn't. Um, if you have tried this feature, please let me know. It's very interesting. I think that it could be very helpful and save some time. However, I wonder if the number in the table of contents, say page 12, would also have to be page 12 in the PDF for it to work correctly, because sometimes you'll have like the title page, like the cover of the book as a scan. That would be page one in the PDF, whereas page one starts later on in the PDF and it's not actually like the first page that you have saved. I wonder if that messes things up, but it didn't even automatically import anything. So there's a whole thing. Okay, let's move on from bookmarks and let's take a look at set lists. So this is a set list that I created for Four Score Friday uh, last week. Last week was the third, yeah. October's just flying by. So um, to add a song to a set list, you can go to the set list, press the plus button down at the bottom, that will take you to your familiar add scores to set list dialog. Those have now been added to our set list. Now I did see someone was looking for the shuffle button within set lists that has just moved to the three dots shuffle and it just put it in a random order. If you'd like to make a new set list, you can just go to set lists, press the plus button. You can either add a folder or you can add a set list, which we will do now. We'll just make it today's date, which is the ninth. And you're met with the same thing. Now, if you'd like to go about this a different way and just add whatever score you're in into a set list, you just tap, you just tap the little down arrow to the right of the title, then either add to the last set list that you were just looking at or add to set list and you can either create a new one with the plus button or find whatever you're looking for in the set list window. One, I don't know if I would call it a bug, but one weird thing that I've run into is when I open a score from another app and import it into four score in that manner, it will open in a new window and I don't have all of the controls that I'm used to having in Fourscore. So let me show you what I mean. So I will go to somewhere like Google Drive or Gmail, anywhere where I have a PDF that I want to open in Fourscore. So let's use Rebecca Clark's manuscript for her Viola Sonata as an example. I go to the three dots, choose open in, it prepares to export and then it brings up the typical sharing window. 
Now, I never see Foursquare listed in the recommended apps to open in. So I always tap on more, and then I scroll down until I see the Foursquare icon. Click on that, and now it's opened in Foursquare, but you can see it's like an odd version of Foursquare. And now you can see all of these different things. It's very different from before. And um, you can also, but you have some, like, see, how do I, this is so odd. So you tap on that little sidebar icon to get rid of that. You can have some of the options that you're used to seeing in the top bar by clicking on the little down arrow. You have the display options, but this is not the full version of the app. Like there's no top bar. It's really weird. So to do that, I press on close window. It, uh, it closes all of Foursquare. Then I have to open Foursquare again. Now it's what I imported is nowhere to be found in the tabs. So then I open a new tab and now I have to find the score in my library. And now we have it in the real version. So it's a weird either bug or feature <laughs> that I've never had before in Foursquare. So that's something that I've had to get used to. And uh, I personally hope they change that in a future update. Since this is a new version of the app, like new version in the update, you know, usually when an app updates to a new version number, like it goes from 13 to 14 or 14 to 15, there are usually big changes. Otherwise it's like 15.1, it adds some little things. 15.2, it adds some other things, it fixes some bugs. So since we've moved up to a new number, there are going to be bugs, things might crash. The best that you can, you know, if, if you're encountering a problem that is really bothering you and that you're running into often, try to reach out to Foursquare's team, let them know about these bugs or, you know, file a bug report or whatever um, so that they can be aware of those things and so that they can make the app better. Apps, you know, you, you really have a say when it comes to apps. A lot of developers will listen to the feedback that they get. So if you're unhappy with something or if you have ideas or things aren't going quite right, let them know because you very well might help an app change, not even just Foursquare, but especially very small apps that are run by just kind of indie developers. They will use that feedback to make the app better. So definitely reach out, let them know about the bugs that are happening and hopefully you will see some change and things will get better. I personally am really enjoying Foursquare version 15. I think it's a very fresh new look. I, I am having a lot of fun trying it out still. If you have other questions or bugs or things that I didn't really go over today, please let me know down below because I'd love to help you try to fix those. Of course, also, let the developers know. That's a little bit more important than letting me know. So let me know if there's any way that I can help. Um, depending on your question, I might make a Foursquare Friday video on it, but I will see you again next week. Just so you know, my October videos might be a little bit sparse though, because I am getting married soon. And so everything has been busy and crazy. So I hope you enjoyed this update on Foursquare version 15. I will hopefully see you again next week. And thank you so much for watching today.